right guys <clears throat> it is a gloomy day here in the end times in the paradise of east of bumblefuck new mexico and i'm procrastinating i gotta start loading a u-haul truck to start moving this planet eating shit around the planet out here in paradise in the end times but before i do it being Tuesday morning, I need to bring you, I need to go onto the science pages of the mainstream media today to see how the various uh, mad scientists and billionaires and, and whatnot, what they're up to this week uh, in their ever, in their never ending, what is it? Is it a never ending pursuit to save this planet or kill this planet and everyone on it? I've mentioned a few of these stories during my various end times headlines over the week, but we're going to lump them up all together. And uh, we're going to start out here uh, with this article and from Vanity Fair magazine. If you go over to my quote of the day that I just did, I quoted extensively from this excellent article by uh, columnist Maureen Dowd uh, in Vanity Fair. Good Lord, this, uh, this article is pretty much a book in itself. I'll try to remember to put the link onto it. Anybody trying to figure out how artificial intelligence is going to kill us all. Uh, the title of this article from Maureen, Elon Musk's billion dollar crusade to stop the AI apocalypse. Elon Musk is famous for his futuristic gambles, but Silicon Valley's latest rush to embrace artificial intelligence scares him, and he thinks you should be frightened too. Inside his efforts, to influence the rapidly advancing field and its proponents and to save humanity from machine learning overlords. And this is uh, and the and, and this story, I mean, is broken down into all of these various uh, starting off with the story within a story running a mock. I'm just going to read the first sentence, and I quoted at length, uh, I say in my quote of the day, and I'm going to try to remember to put the link on here and encourage you, if you read any story about AI, make it this one, but uh, you need about an hour to do it. Running a mock. It was just a friendly little argument about the Fate of Humanity. Dennis Hassabis, a leading creator of Advanced AI, was chatting with Elon Musk, a leading doomsayer, about the perils of artificial intelligence. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> you know, any, anyway... Uh, as I say, I could, I, I could go on and read this article and spend an hour, but I got about 10 more stories. And next to that story is a somewhat similar. This is just a Q&A interview with this fellow I've never heard of, but I need to find out more about. This is from Vox. <clears throat> from a fellow named Yuval Harari. Yuval Harari on why humans will not dominate Earth in 300 years. Quote, it's not because I overestimate the artificial intelligence, it's because most people tend to overestimate human beings. So anyway, Yuval Noah Harari is the author of Sapiens. Uh, 
and that he has a new book called Homo Deuce, A Brief History of Tomorrow, uh, which is about what comes next for humanity and the threat our own intelligence and creative capacity poses to our future. And I'm just, this is an excellent interview. I'm just going to read the first Q&A. So the, uh, the writer, Ezra Klein, asked the question, Do you think that in 200 or 300 years, human beings will be the dominant actor on Earth? This is Uval Harari's answer. Absolutely not. If you ask me, in 50 years would we still be the dominant actor on Earth? It would be a difficult question, but 300 years? It's a very easy question. In 300 years, Homo sapiens will not be the dominant life form on Earth if we still exist at all. Given the current pace of technological development, it is possible we destroy ourselves in some ecological or nuclear calamity. The more likely possibility, according to Yuval at least, is that we will use bioengineering and machine learning and artificial intelligence either to upgrade ourselves into a totally different kind of being or to create a totally different kind of being that will take us over. In any case, in 200 or 300 years, the beings that will dominate the earth will be far more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or chimpanzees. <laughs> there you go. All right, from that new book now, I mentioned this one in one of my, uh, one of my End Times headlines uh, from the past week, but it certainly bears repeating for anyone who missed that. Nano weapons, the size of insects, pose a bigger threat than nuclear missiles, experts warn. This is physicist Louis Del Monte. Physicist Louis Del Monte, his new book, Nano Weapons, A Growing Threat to Humanity, argues that governments are already engaged in an arms race which will become the deadliest arms race ever known, even more deadly than the nuclear arms race. So what's all of this all about? How about tiny insect-sized nanoweapons currently under development by the world superpowers could pose a bigger threat than nuclear weapons and could even wipe out the human race. Uh, and Del Monte, uh, his, according to his analysis, he feels there is a 1 in 20 chance, what's that, a 5% chance that they will, in fact, wipe out the human race by, the, by 2100. And if you think this is just the superpowers, perhaps more alarmingly, terrorists may be able to get their hands on insects, insect-sized robots, which could be used to poison food and water supplies, for instance. Del Monte describes weapons ranging from small, self-propelling bombs which could destroy buildings down to insect-sized drones. Okay, let's get a quote from Mr. Del Monte before, from his new book before we move on. <clears throat> the events that most people consider likely to cause humanity's extinction 
such as a large asteroid impact or a supervolcanic eruption, actually have a relatively low probability <coughs> of occurring in the order of 1 in 50,000 or less. Obviously, nanoweapons are at the top of the list of uh, things likely to cause humanity's extinction. Having a 1 in 20 chance of causing human extinction by the end of this century. There you go. <clears throat> okay, I think I mentioned this one. Was it just in the last day or two from my End Times headlines of the day? Is it a bird? Is it a bug? No, it is a biomimetic micro drone with flapping wings. There you go. Uh, this is some uh, group of mad scientists with a engineering startup company called Animal Dynamics being funded with a one and a half million pound uh, donation from the UK Ministry of Defense is building a micro drone with wings inspired by the flapping flight of a dragonfly. So they're now actually trying to build the thing and saying they are confident <clears throat> they will have a flying prototype of their Skeeter drone by this summer. Yes. Uh, anyway, what is the purpose uh, of this thing? Uh, you know, it'd be real nice. So drones with flapping wings already exist, including a DARPA-backed drone that resembles a hummingbird. Yes. Uh, anyway... I, 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 at some point, uh, at some point, they're going to tell what the fuck this is supposed to uh, do for the planet. But I have yet, I'm go th th this article is, is every bit as long as the goddamn article in Vanity Fair. And uh, I have no idea anywhere in this article, good God Almighty, what is the point? There you go. Anyway, okay, and since they don't ever get to the point of why build this thing, but I think we all know why they're building this thing. <clears throat> anyway, as long as we're celebrating drones, here is Artificial Intelligence, the Park Rangers of the Anthropocene. We worry about machines going rogue. What if they went green instead? And this is, uh, th this is talking about, uh, you know, sounding like Manga Bay, you know, looking at the other side, the, the bright side of autonomous killer robots. Yes, this is how autonomous killer robots are going to save the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, but then in the second article, they admit these robots probably are not going to be the savior of the Great Barrier Reef. That's it, but that's not the point. It's the approach that, that matters. There you go. Uh, okay. This is how, why killer drones are such a good eye, how they're going to save 
the planet. Quote, they're of us, but designed to ultimately operate without us. And they represent a burgeoning movement to remove human influence from conservation to save wild ecosystems by taking us out of the picture entirely. And uh, so, you know, I can't argue with that. Uh, that is the number one way to save wild ecosystems is by taking us humans out of the picture entirely. It doesn't say at what point uh, these, uh, these autonomous killer drones are going to start flying around wild ecosystems and start literally taking humans out of the wild ecosystems. So this is your old eco-Nazi cheering on any autonomous eco-Nazi killer drone. What's going on with Bill Gates this week? Bill Gates has started a new crusade to save the world. Uh, his newest project, what does he call this? Radiant Earth Project. The Radiant Earth Project expected to cost multi-millions of dollars aims to find ways to combine and analyze Earth data and imagery and offer it free of charge in formats that do not require specific expertise to understand. There you go. Uh, Radiant, this is one of their PR flacks, quote, Radiant will help build the who, what, where, when, or why for the planning and management of issues such as land tenure, global health, sustainable development, food security, and disaster response. Thank you, billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates, for your new crusade to save the world. Oh shit, now I actually meant the, this one to put as part of my, uh, my conspiracy wacko Tuesday thing, but it fits here pretty well, talking about how biofuels could limit jet contrails. Uh, of course, you will never see the, uh, <clears throat> you will never see the word chemtrails anywhere here. What was interesting uh, is this quote from uh, one of these mad scientists, Richard Moore from NASA's Langley Research Center. Uh, we know these contrails and cirrus clouds, you, you know, the, when these goddamn things spread out and cover the sky, we know these contrails have a warming effect on the Earth's climate. And it is currently thought the warming effect associated with those clouds is more significant than all of the carbon dioxide emitted by aviation since the first powered flights began. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I thought that the whole point of these chemtrails that, you know, people like uh, Paul Beckwith are cheering on, these geoengineering solar radiation management, the point was to cool the planet with them. But as I've pointed out in former rants about these, these goddamn chemtrails, which are water vapor condensation contrails, uh, 
you know, what they're talking about here, since they don't go away at night, that at night they, they operate like a, a blanket around your water heater and don't let the heat escape. But anyway, the bottom line is they are going to uh, cure the problem of chemtrails by changing the, uh, the jet fuel from to biofuels, how we are going to save the planet from global warming caused by contrails by putting biofuels in the jet engines instead of fossil fuels. Oops, wrong button. Got to keep my bullet, my buttons. I thought the phone had been turned off. Uh, I've also mentioned this article. Uh, <clears throat> mentioned this article before this hilarious story. Researchers watched the end of an online world and it was surprisingly civil. So this was these video gamers. Uh, you know, trying to look into the apocalypse. The, the dog-eat-dog apocalypse in which murder is everywhere and everyone is miserable. But when you, when you look at the end of the world, according to this new, new paper, they found out maybe it won't be so bad. Maybe the end of days means less killing and more kumbaya. Yes, uh, if you didn't hear it the first time, a new study by a team of international researchers has shined a brighter light on Armageddon by analyzing behavior in the last days of the online game Arc Age. What they found was that although some players carelessly killed and pillaged, most of them barely changed their behaviors towards each other in the end, and instead they seemed to give up on themselves uh, as they're predicting that instead of killing each other as we begin to uh, pull our heads out of our asses in the end times, more likely than killing each other, we'll just become depressed collapsitarians and just kill ourselves instead. Uh, okay, asking the question here in the mainstream media science pages, what to do on the next mission to Venus. Yeah, so I guess uh, scientists from Russia and the U.S. are getting together in Moscow to discuss the scientific objectives of the next planned mission to Venus in about 10 years from now. Uh, obviously, uh, if, if, if they're sending a, a scientific mission to Venus 10 years from now, the end game is to figure out how we're going to be living on our own planet 20 years from now as this planet goes Venus. Anybody who does not understand why scientists are studying Venus, they are looking in to our own future here on Earth. Okay, two more. I've already, again, I mentioned this one in my Clueless Moron Roundup rant. Face recognition flushes out China's toilet paper crooks. There's a years-long crime spree by Chinese toilet paper thieves may have reached the end of its role after an authorities in southern Beijing have started installing facial rec recognition technology to flush out 
bathroom bandits. So this is after you uh, go in to, you know, you take a shit in the uh, stall, but before you're allowed any to get any toilet paper, this little voice after you've taken a dump says to you, Welcome, please stand in the recognition zone. So before you were able to wipe your ass in a public restroom in Beijing, you need to get your face digitally recorded. Just in case you're thinking about using too much toilet paper to wipe your ass, Big Brother is on it. But I want to wrap up with some good news from the science pages, which uh, I have uh, already mentioned. Hallelujah, there is hope here on LiveScience.com. These three superbugs pose the greatest threat to human health. The world, the UN's World Health Organization is issuing a warning uh, about a group of deadly bacteria. The WHO released its first ever list of priority pathogens, a list of antibiotic resistant bacteria that the UN says poses the greatest threat to human health on the planet. These are multi-drug resistant bacteria, sometimes called superbugs, are a critical priority because infections with these germs can be deadly because there is nothing the mad scientists have figured out to do about the superbugs. Bring on the superbugs. And anyway, so never let it be said that your old ego Nazi never has any good news to share with you. So I'm going to wrap up here because I'm done procrastinating and it's time, me and the little dog, to head to the U-Haul, U-Haul, to start hauling some more of this planet-eating shit around paradise in the end times, right about when the first rain of 2017, the first rainy day of the year is the year Ham Bun Little Tail rents a U-Haul truck. What a surprise. I'm off to move shit around the planet. Bye, guys. Are you ready to go move shit around the planet?